it's hilarious to me that not that long ago, DC elites, pundits, were all telling us that Beto O'Rourke was going to be a force to be reckoned with in 2020. One article that stood out to me is an article by David Ferris, I believe, from The Week, which claimed Beto is the new Bernie. And it also featured this cursed image, which I am assuming still haunts thousands of people. But nonetheless, Beto O'Rourke launched his 2020 campaign and it's not going too well. They were all wrong, unsurprisingly. And when you look at some of these images that his campaign has been posting, it's easy to see that there isn't as much momentum as many DC elites predicted there would be. And I mean, these showings aren't necessarily terrible. He's got a couple hundred people at various events. But when you juxtapose these images with images of Bernie Sanders campaign rallies where he's getting thousands of people, well, it's obvious that their prediction didn't quite pan out because they told us that Beto O'Rourke would cut into Bernie Sanders grassroots fundraising. Sure, Bernie can raise millions of dollars by small donors, but Beto O'Rourke is going to eat into that because there's this overlap between Beto and Bernie's bases. And certainly, you know, um, he's going to undercut Bernie Sanders' grassroots appeal. That's not happening. And Beto's own staff and himself really realize that this isn't actually happening. So what are they doing now that his campaign is going nowhere and it has essentially hit a brick wall? He is relaunching and he's giving himself a political makeover, essentially, because as Will Weissert and Steve Peoples of AP News reports, Beto O'Rourke plans reintroduction as 2020 buzz fizzles. <laughs> Amazing. Now, before we get into the article, stop and think about that. 2020 buzz fizzles. There's already articles being written like this and it's May. He just launched in March. Now, I expected his campaign to fizzle, but I would have never predict predicted that it would have been this soon. Like, I would have expected that maybe after the debates, he's going to kind of fizzle out when people see him on the debate stage and see that he's not very strong and that he doesn't really bring, you know, any policy ideas to the table and he's a platitude machine, but he is already fizzling. That is surprising to me, who had zero confidence in Beto O'Rourke. So it goes to show you what a horrible candidate he is. And I don't even know why if you can't gain any momentum this early, you wouldn't just drop out. Because if you could acknowledge that you need to relaunch just a couple of months after launching your campaign, when there are more than 20 other people in the race, I mean, why waste your time? Just drop out. But nonetheless, here's what they say about the relaunch of Beto O'Rourke's campaign. Beto O'Rourke barreled into the 2020 presidential race with breakneck energy and a fly by the seat of his pants campaign style that saw him leap atop tables to address overflow crowds with the organic off the cuff candor that had made him a Texas sensation. But since his mid-March campaign launch, the buzz surrounding the former congressman has evaporated, competing in a massive field of Democratic White House hopefuls, O'Rourke has sagged in the polls. He's made few promises that resonated or produced headline-grabbing moments, instead driving around the country meeting with voters at mostly small events. In a tacit recognition that this approach isn't working, O'Rourke is planning to try again, taking a hands-on role in staging a reintroduction ahead of the next month's premier Democratic presidential debate. As he finalizes his plans, O'Rourke has entered an intentional, quiet period to build out campaign infrastructure, according to an advisor who spoke on condition of anonymity to discuss the campaign strategy. This, to me, I almost feel bad for him. Like, I don't feel bad because he kind of brought this upon himself by being completely vacuous and devoid of any policy substance whatsoever. But I mean, to relaunch this soon, it's like, it's cringeworthy. That's what it is. It's cringeworthy. I mean, at what point do you just give up and realize out of all of these presidential hopefuls, if I'm not gaining any momentum, maybe we call it quits. Because there's certainly a number of candidates who aren't polling very well that are still building momentum, but they're building nonetheless, even if it may be, you know, a small amount of momentum, they're still building. But Beto had a really huge launch, and then he's fizzling, he's going down. It's embarrassing. 
Now, they're not actually admitting like his campaign, his top aides anyways, are not saying this is Beto 2.0, you know, the relaunch. They're not saying that. They're trying to be a little bit coy. They're trying to downplay it. But nonetheless, Beto himself kind of acknowledged that he had a rough start, saying, I think in part, I was just trying to keep up when I first started out. <laughs> Yikes. So what I would do if I were in Beto's position is one, we come out swinging with policy. We get new advisors because obviously the people who have been advising him aren't working out well for him. And you come up with a very precise message because when you think about Beto or work, what does he stand for? He's in favor of some policies that I like. He wants to legalize marijuana nationwide, but there are other candidates who also have taken that position. Bernie Sanders, Tulsi Gabbard. I mean, so why would you opt for someone else when there are other people in the race that offer what he offers, but more? So what exactly will be the strategy with the uh, so-called Beto 2.0 relaunch? Well, first of all, they acknowledge that he hasn't been making enough media appearances. Like, there's been this self-imposed blackout almost where he won't go on news shows he won't be interviewed he hasn't had a cnn town hall i'm sure that they invited him but he hasn't appeared on one but that's one of the first things that they're starting to change so he's appearing on the rachel maddow show by the time you see this he'll already have appeared he's also appearing on abc's the view so that's one area where they are changing now what's the other thing that they're going to change they're actually going to produce a policy platform. You'd think that that would have been a priority to begin with. You'd think that a specific policy would have been the catalyst for a presidential campaign. Like, think about some of these other candidates. Tulsi Gabbard got in the race because she cares deeply about foreign policy. Bernie Sanders got in the race because he cares deeply about Medicare for all and taking on the billionaire class. Conversely, Beto O'Rourke got in the race because he was just born to be in it, according to him. It's so amazing. Yeah, that's just not going to inspire people. This isn't about you. If you're running for president, this is about us. This is about the American people. And Beto O'Rourke just doesn't get that. He's in this for the name recognition. He's in this to become a celebrity, to build his national profile. And it's embarrassing. You just lost your Senate race. Why would you choose to then seek a higher position in government after you couldn't even beat the guy who lost to the person you ultimately want to run against. I mean, it makes no sense to me. So if I were Beto O'Rourke, I would also hire new advisors because that's something that's desperately needed. And I would also consider really suspending the campaign because really this is a waste of time. If you're already having to relaunch after a couple of months, usually at the beginning of your campaign, that momentum will be sustained for a little while. But I mean, if it's already fizzling, if the momentum is already dying, this is a horrible sign of what's to come. So, I mean, maybe the relaunch will help him, but you should have really put policy front and center from the beginning, but he didn't do that because he doesn't care about policy. He doesn't really have a core ideology. He's just, you know, instinctively conservative and he wants to run because he's born to be in it. Embarrassing. Um, if I had to guess and make a prediction, I'd say that this probably won't help him, but if he really does come out swinging with policies, Maybe it could, but I mean, just the fact that he has to do a relaunch or a soft relaunch, whatever they want to frame this as, is downright embarrassing.